Cristina Costiniuc, originară din Constanța, a venit în București pentru studii și a reușit să obțină o diplomă în traducere și interpretare. Cu experiență de peste 5 ani, s-a implicat în dezvoltarea instrumentelor de prevenire a plagiatului în universități. De asemenea, a făcut numeroase prezentări pentru a face cunoscută unui public cât mai larg problemele și consecințele lipsei de integritate academică în special, atât în cadrul conferințelor în țară cât și în străinătate. O realizare importantă o reprezintă contribuția în crearea și dezvoltarea companiei antiplagiat din România. Continuăm, deci, discuția noastră și o ducem mai în concret. Cristina? Thank you very much. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Cristina Costiniuc, and I work as a product manager for the anti-plagiarism system, System Antiplagiat.ro. I apologize if my voice sounds weird. <coughs> I'm, I caught a bit of a cold. Um, I would like to talk to you today about our experience in fighting academic plagiarism in Romania. First of all, I would like to start by painting a picture for you of what the situation was like in the beginning. Uh, before 2012, the issue of plagiarism was only sporadically discussed. There are a few articles written about plagiarism, but it was not, the, the issue was not detailed and analyzed as it should have been. Plagiarism was mostly debated in scientific circles, but students didn't receive any information on plagiarism. A few universities used some anti-plagiarism tools, but few actions were taken in order to prevent plagiarism. And there was no national stand on plagiarism at the time, and therefore it was quite widespread and accepted everywhere. What changed in 2012? As many of you already know, we had the international scandal of the Prime Minister's plagiarized PhD dissertation. Because of this international scandal, the national media also started to talk about it, and they started to debate it. Uh, so society started being aware that it's an issue, and plagiarism became a hot topic at the time. Everybody was discussing it, everybody shared their opinions on it. And so also at the time, universities started to take action in order to prevent plagiarism in their students' papers. And uh, also in 2012, we had the first study that asked university professors about plagiarism. Over 1,000 professors were asked, and 69% of them said that they think that plagiarism is present on a large scale in students' papers. Now, since that time, we have also made a lot of steps towards progress. Uh, the Ministry of Education developed a national platform for PhD dissertations and academic titles. Since 2016, it is mandatory that all dissertations are checked for plagiarism. The Ministry also issued an order which detailed the procedure for withdrawing doctoral titles, and as a result, several titles of well-known people were withdrawn. And so the ministry sent a message. Plagiarism is now treated as a serious issue and we will not stand for it. Uh, currently, most universities use anti-plagiarism tools and they have implemented procedures and guides so that they can prevent plagiarism. And lawmakers are discussing and proposing new legislation. In spite of all the progress, we still have to face a lot of challenges. And some of these are, first of all, the fact that legislation is still being debated and it keeps being postponed. In my opinion, this keeps us from moving forward faster than we currently are. Uh, at this time, most universities still prefer to only check PhD dissertations because they believe that bachelors and masters are not as important as PhDs. Uh, many professors expect that the anti-plagiarism system that they use uh, should give a verdict. And while we do understand that technology is here to help us, while we do understand that technology is here to help us, uh, we can't really, unfortunately, technology is not yet at that point that it can replace a human being. So when we have the similarity report, the result of the anti-plagiarism check, we still have to analyze those results. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Also, unfortunately, although we have discussed a, a lot about plagiarism, uh, we see that we still have a poor understanding of plagiarism as an issue and what the consequences are. And unfortunately, here I don't mean only students, but also professors. Uh, this year, we, we, students write to us quite a lot to ask us about plagiarism. Sometimes they try to find out how they can plagiarize, and we don't tell them. Uh, but there are, uh, this year, a group of students wrote to us and asked us, why can't we just take the text of our bachelor paper, modify it a bit, and use it, use it as our master's thesis? So they don't understand the concept of self-plagiarism. But we, we've also heard professors uh, which said that they think, for example, that one type of plagiarism, for example, plagiari uh, stealing somebody's idea is not plagiarism because you still have to put in work to rephrase it, to write it in your own words. So we still have a poor understanding and we have to deal with this challenge that we have. Also, in, re in recent years, uh, we've seen an increase of offers from companies that we call paper mills. These are those companies that write papers on demand for, stu on demand for students in exchange for money. And they can write, they can prepare anything from a simple essay to a PowerPoint presentation to bachelor's, uh, bachelor's and master's uh, thesis and PhD dissertations. And this is a real threat, but nobody in our society at least, is discussing about it yet. So what are we afraid of? Because when we talk about plagiarism, we can also see that we talk about a lot of fears. Uh, first of all, of course, we have the fear of being accused of plagiarism because it has become this political tool that people use. And every couple of months, we see in the media that a new well-known person, public figure, is being accused of plagiarism. We are afraid of being our accused ourselves. Even if we can prove that we have not plagiarized, we're afraid that that accusation will leave a stain on our reputation. Universities have the fear of discovering rampant plagiarism. I remember that in 2013, we were discussing with one university the possibility of them also checking bachelor's and master's thesis. And their reply was that uh, doing so would mean opening Pandora's box because they expected that over 50% of their students plagiarized and that they, they would have to kick them out, they would lose students. And I am happy to say that this year, they did verify all their papers, and less than 5% of them had high similarity percentages. Uh, there's also the fear that professors have that they can be held accountable if their students plagiarize. There is the fear of different evaluations because two different professors, even from the same field, can evalu evaluate in different ways, and universities are afraid that maybe at the university level they accept a paper, and then when it goes to the ministry, the ministry will say that it's not okay. And of course, we also have the fear of the unknown. And this is especially for students, because as much as we discuss plagiarism, uh, students still don't know what plagiarism is and how many types there are and what they can do to prevent it. So what can we do? in order to fix all those fears that we have and face all those challenges? Well, first of all, my opinion is that we should focus on prevention rather than punishment. We have to look, as the professor said before, we have to look at those causes, what causes this dishonesty. Uh, we have to inform all the parties on plagiarism. As I said before, not only students, but also professors. And it also has to be clear what plagiarism is, how many types there are, how can we can prevent it, and what the consequences of plagiarizing are. Uh, we have to teach students about research and referencing, because at this point, um, these students come 
from, an educational, from tw 12 years spent in an educational system that encourages them to memorize texts without necessarily analyzing them, understanding them, or giving their own opinions on them. So they're encouraged for 12 years to memorize texts, and then when, it, when they come uh, to make their university studies, professors ask them to be 100% original. And that is how, why we have to teach students to be original and how they have to research, how research is actually done and how referencing is done. <clears throat> we also have to send a clear message that plagiarism is not accepted. It's not enough to, to just find case, cases of plagiarism. We also have to do something with them. It would be of key importance if we could create a national database that can include not only PhD dissertations, but also all the papers that students write. This would also be a key factor in combating those paper mills that I told you about earlier. And of course, it's very important that we implement transparent procedures so that all the parties involved know what the process, the evaluation process is. In the end, I would like to also tell you a few, I, I would like to give you a few examples of best practices. <coughs> First of all, in Romania, at the Academy of Economic Studies, they check all the papers written within the Academy against plagiarism, and they have also implemented a procedure which is very detailed, it's transparent, and it's public. Everybody is encouraged to read it so that they can be informed on what happens in the evaluation process. At the University of Bucharest, I was happy to read recently uh, that they introduced a mandatory course on ethics and academic integrity for masters and PhD students. I think this is a very great idea and from next year I understood that they will also apply it uh, to bachelor students. At the West University of Timisoara, I read that they have a postgraduate course for training ethics counselors, which again is very good for us. We need specialists who are ready to deal and help us in dealing with ethical problems in our universities. And from outside Romania, I can tell you that in Poland, the legislation allows for the withdrawal not only of PhD dissertations, but also of, for bachelor's and master's thesis. And in case of PhD dissertations, if the doctoral degree is withdrawn, this does not exclude disciplinary, criminal, or civil raw, law responsibility. In Ukraine, they have all the dissertations are mandatorily checked against plagiarism. Then they are published on the university website. And they're working on a central database of dissertations. And in Kazakhstan, they have mandatory anti-plagiarism verifications for PhDs and master's thesis, and they also have a database for dissertations. In conclusion, I would like to tell you that as you have seen, we, have, we still have a lot of challenges that we need to face. We still have a lot of fears that we need to face, and we still have a lot of questions that we need to answer but if we look at where, where we were five years ago in 2012 and at where we are now, we can see that we have made a lot of progress and I hope that this will encourage us to move forward in the fight against plagiarism. Thank you.